Tuesday, November 3rd of 2020, our first guest could make history as the first woman and the first Kamala ever to be elected president of the United States. She's from right here in Los Angeles. Please say hello to Senator Kamala Harris. <laughs> Welcome home. I know it's you've been out on the road. Home. I just How's got the, in last night. How's the running for president thing going? I'm enjoying it. I Are don't you? know what that says about my personality, but I'm really enjoying it. I have a feeling that it, it, it's got to be kind of fun to go out it there is. and mix it up and field questions and listen to people cheering and seeing people in states you might not have ever visited before. It is, and but you know, Jimmy, the thing that I'm loving most is going to, you know, the, the last trip I took to South Carolina, for example in rural towns where it is much more intimate, where it's direct conversations, where whatever you're thinking is being challenged. Um, I feel so strongly that this has to be a campaign that um, not only, well, let me just say, I fully intend to win. Oh, good. <laughs> There's not much point to going, to going <laughs> no, exactly. and doing this otherwise, yeah. But, but a metric of, of success for me will also be that at the end of the process, we are relevant. And so what I'm enjoying most is being in places where I listen, especially at this phase of it, more than I talk. And where I am validating or verifying or being set straight about really um, what are the priorities of people. And um, it's been a great process. How does your family feel about this? So, um, so we, my husband is one of the most supportive people you've ever met. Um, he has a great sense of humor. He loves people. And he joins me on the road when he can, but he's based here in L.A. What is his name? You're Doug. Right. Doug. I don't know if we're ready for a first lady named Doug. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Doug, huh? Oh, he is the most fully actualized person you've ever met. Oh, really? And in fact, he's very much enjo enjoying um, being the spouse of. He's oh, very, he is. He's having he's fun very, with it. He's mm -hmm. very Good. secure. And um, and then our kids, we have two, um, 23 and 19, and they have been so incredibly supportive. Are so, they nervous about the, the, you know, the people prying into their lives? I'm or? nervous about that. You are, yeah, right. I'm sure. nervous about that because. Did you I mean, go for, through all their stuff and go like, we got to check Instagram <laughs> and make sure everything's well, clear? Well, we had a couple of talks. About yeah, right. That. I mean, because listen, you have to. it's well, it's you know, look, it's. It, it is what it is. I right. mean, listen, um, we all know that nobody is perfect. I said that in my opening speech when I announced my candidacy in my hometown of Oakland, California, in front of 22,000 people, which is, um, I am not perfect. Our kids are not perfect. My husband is not perfect. Um, and I don't think that the American people want perfect. What they want is a leader who is going to put their interest above self-interest. Well, based on what's going on truth. now... We definitely didn't want perfect. I mean, we quite you think? clearly <laughs> settled for less than perfect. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> the whole thing is really interesting because, like, you got a big bump today. Uh, CNN did a poll, and you're, I think they have you in third. You jumped a lot of points behind Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden, who's not technically running yet, but right. obviously he's going to run. Do you want Joe Biden? Would you rather he doesn't run? I think that everyone who wants to run should run. Everyone and who wants to run should run. Truly, the more the merrier because we've got, we do not lack for talent among Democrats. And I think that it is good to have a robust competition um, to get to the point of, of determining who will be the nominee for the party. Are Joe and Bernie too old to be president of the United States? I think age is more than a chronological fact. Mm -hmm. I think it's a state of mind. And if, each candidate can show that they have an ability to understand where people are right now and also have a vision for the future, um, then I think they will be successful. Are uh, people, like, are, I'm sorry to interrupt, yeah, but are people learning how to pronounce your first name? Um, it, it helps when I tell them that it's like comma, like a punctuation mark, and then add a la. I have and a way that I, because, <laughs> I don't know if you remember, because we're, we're about the same age. Yes, yes. There was a wrestler 
named Kamala the Ugandan giant, yes, who spelled was. his name the same way you do. <laughs> yes. And that's what I thought of correct. the first time I saw your name. You are correct. I haven't checked up on him recently. Do you know what's going on with him? He's, I don't think he's in great health, but he's still around, thank yeah. goodness. Yeah. 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 You might want to bring him on the trail, by the way, because he was I very know. popular. He would pack a big punch, but I'm well, up. <laughs> and I know this is going to sound very strange, but and this is something we talk about in my family. Yeah. You, I mean, she's much older than you, obviously, but you look like my mom. No kidding. Yes, and I brought wow. some photographs. In fact, today really? is my mother's birthday. Oh, and, happy uh, birthday. And this is <laughs> you oh my, my mom oh. together. And it, it kind of, it doesn't quite oh entirely capture it, but like there's definitely. <laughs> oh, she went... is fantastic. Yeah, well, Look she's a little crazy, she... but. <laughs> But she's she's lovely, yeah. So, oh, and so you grew up in Vegas. That's right? how I remember. Is I think yeah. I think of Kamala and mom, my mamala, you know. But that's what that's what our kids call me because. Oh, they call you mamala. Yeah, because um, they are. We don't use the term in our family, stepmother. Okay. Um, I think D Disney messed that up for everybody. <laughs> um, but they are technically my stepchildren, but they are my children, and um, and they call me mamala. And, um, and we have a very modern family. Um, my husband's ex-wife, the kid's mother, um, and her mother came to our house for Thanksgiving. Oh, good. You got to get um, her in are, line. You no, know, you got to make sure. <laughs> we're bring all everyone good. into the we circle. We have a huge, very modern family. It's, it's really great, actually. Senator Warren, Elizabeth Warren, had a town hall last night, and she said that she thinks we should do away with the Electoral College. Is, is that, do you agree with that? I think that it's, I'm open to the discussion. I mean, there's no question that um, the popular vote has been diminished in terms of making the final decision about who's the president of the United States, and we need to deal with that. Um, so I'm open to the discussion. President Trump wants to get rid of regular college, college altogether. <laughs> Indeed, <laughs> indeed, because you know exactly. I guess he's decided it's not important to read. How do you, because there writing. are a lot of can a lot of people <laughs> running for the Democratic nomination, and there and you mostly agree on things. Is that would you say that's fair? I think on, Especially on a lot the of big issues. Things. Yeah, yeah, I think that's right. So how are you different from? I mean, obviously, besides being yourself and your 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 background, but as far as, far as Policy goes as far as a plan goes. How are you different? Because that's, yeah. for me, what I need to figure out is like, okay, there's a lot of people here. How do you here. distinguish? Yeah, yeah, and how do you no, distinguish? No, that's fair. I mean, obviously, it's going to be a long campaign, and and all of us will, you know, have opportunities to speak, and, and, and the voters will learn more, and obviously the voters ultimately will make the decision. I think one of the distinctions is um, I have a background of having been a leader, um, and I think that the voters are going to decide who will be the next commander in chief and president of the United States based on a, a experience of leading. I was, and I led at a local government level, at state government, and now at federal government. I was the district attorney of San Francisco. I was the attorney general of California, where I led an office of almost 5,000 people. And now, obviously, in the United States Senate. I think people are going to want and look to who has a demonstrated ability to be a fighter and to be a fighter for the people. I've done that work. I took on the five big banks of the United States when we were fighting for the homeowners of California and, by extension, the nation around the foreclosure crisis and when they were, you know, basically stealing from homeowners around these, these predatory mortgage practices. I also believe that what voters are going to want is they are going to want that there is someone who has the proven ability to prosecute the case against this administration. Yeah. And this president. Yeah, people do want that. <laughs> and, and that is going to be about having an ability and a proven ability to be able to articulate the evidence that makes the case for why we need new leadership in this country. So you're saying if you are president and Donald Trump is out of the White House, you will then continue to prosecute him and his various hench characters. I am very supportive of Bob Mueller being able to finish his process uh -huh. and do yeah. his job. Yeah, tell him to and finish his process already. <laughs> yeah. Are you a Star Wars fan? Oh, you... my God. So yeah. let me just tell you, I just turned into my 12-year-old self in the green room. I met, met Mark, Mark Hamill. Hamill. And literally, I, I, I met Luke Skywalker. I literally, he said to me that the force is with me. I almost started crying. <laughs> I almost, That's... No, I that's big. I, I totally
finally reverted. Who needs the Space Force uh, when you have the I'm actual force? I'm you. And, and he's so interesting, and he's so talented. I have I mean, an idea for you guys. Through those years. I think this would be a very <laughs> potent uh, ticket. <laughs> You do a lot worse than Luke Skywalker. Are things as divided behind the scenes in the Senate as they appear to be when we see a hearing where mm -hmm. it, people don't seem to have any common ground whatsoever? No. They're not? No. Do, um, behind I'll, the I'll scenes, you... do people, do Republican senators complain about President Trump? Um, yeah. They and, do. And they roll their eyes. But I, I'm going to give you an example, though, of also... Well, first of all, I, I am leading two pieces of very significant legislation that are bipartisan. One is to reform the money bail system in the United States to get rid of money bail. Um, because That's happening it is, here in California, Yeah, and right? it's happening yeah. here in California because, you know, people are literally sitting in jail for days, weeks, and months waiting to go to trial just because they can't afford to get out. Meanwhile, is, people who have money get out and that's then an economic justice issue. It is a great issue. injustice. It really is. Yeah. 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 So there's that, and that's with um, Rand Paul. Um, I have a bill that is about what we need to do to secure the election systems and upgrade it so that the Russians can't hack our elections. And that's with Senator James Lankford from Oklahoma, a Republican. But I'll tell you, this is in particular another example of of the work that happens behind the scenes. I am on the Senate Intelligence Committee. And um, we receive twice a week, for hours at end, um, information in a place called a SCIF, which is a secure location in our United States Capitol, from our intelligence community about threats to our nation and, and issues that we should be informed and concerned about. When we walk in that room, people, there are no cameras. There's no press. There's no audience. People take off their jackets, they roll up their sleeves, and some of the most civilized and important conversations take place in a way that is not only bipartisan, but is nonpartisan. So while we see so much of partisanship that is, is attempting to divide our country, I will tell you, at least in my experience, on these issues around national security in a skiff, um, there is a lot of unity, and that is very heartening. Can I come to one of those meetings? No. Is that something? No, I wouldn't be able to come in the no. skiff, huh? Boy, I'd love to be part of the skiff. I really would. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, stay strong. I know Thank it's going you. to be a, a grueling. Yeah. I don't know how many months are left, but I'm sure a th lot. they're going to seem. Yes. And thank you for coming. It's great Thank to you. have you. Thank Senator you. Kamala Harris, everyone. Congratulations on making it to the end of the YouTube video. Why not celebrate by clicking the subscribe button? You earned it.